of those habits that keep us feeling our best consistently, like eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, centering our diet around a whole foods plant-based diet with minimal processed foods, getting a consistent movement routine going and exercising throughout the week, getting plenty of sunshine and cultivating healthy relationships, lowering our stress. But there are also some habits on top of that, like extra, that can be really helpful for you to create peace inside of yourself, to go after your dreams and reach your goals, and also to just take time for yourself in general, which I think are really helpful. So let's get into these tips. Number one is to get organized with a physical planner. hate the iPhone calendar. I find it very cluttered and hard to navigate on top of the fact that I don't want to be on a screen or on a phone more than I already am. So a physical planner is just much easier for me to organize everything that I need and anytime I need to go look at what next week's schedule is or something on a certain date, I don't have to go scrolling on my phone through the calendar which is always glitching for me and I can instead just use a physical planner which has like stickers and different ways to organize it in a way that is very clear to me so I'm not forgetting or losing track of all the different things I have going on in my life from scouts gymnastics to the boys baseball to phone appointments I have or recording a podcast episode with someone or just who's staying in our ohana for the podcast it's really really helpful for me to have a physical planner and I honestly think the less we can be on our phone and our devices the better so this is just one way in which we can cut down our phone use I personally use the still planner it's s-t-i-l it's really easy to use user-friendly beautiful and I like that it doesn't have dates on top of it I just get like a six month or year planner and I can just put the date on top of the page so I can start the calendar exactly where I want it to. So yeah, physical planner all the way. Number two is gonna be a food related one and even though I've talked about many times on this channel about the importance of eating whole plant foods and fueling ourselves that way, not only for ourselves but also the animals and the planet um, for planetary health, I think this one is worth mentioning. Aim for a variety of at least 30 different plant foods a week. get new ones in if you can. Spices count by the way. Spices have a wide variety of nutritional and medicinal benefits and I recommend reading the book Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Bolsowitz and also The Proof is in the Plants by nutritionist Simon Hill. Both talk about the importance and emphasize how integral it is for our health to get a wide variety of whole plant foods. I know it's easy to get stuck into the same routine of eating those same few vegetables that you like, that you know you're gonna like, and eating them in the same exact way, but branch out a little bit when you're at the grocery store or especially at the farmer's market if you have a farmer's market near you depending on the season that you're at um, try a new vegetable um, throughout the week and also just aim for a wide variety because the wide variety you're getting is supporting your microbiome it's integral to your gut health whole plant foods definitely does the body good sometimes I like to look back and be like wow look at all these different types of even fruits that I've eaten in the week not just vegetables fruits count vegetables count different types of potatoes count let's say you're used to getting the same old recipe potato. Try to branch out and get the red potato, get the uh, purple Okinawan sweet potato, get the um, different kinds of yams that you can get and branch out. Try new mushrooms, get different kinds of sprouts in your diet. If you're used to eating the same kind of salad with the same kind of greens, try adding different kinds of sprouts in it into your salad like broccoli sprouts, peas sprouts, um, and just really branch out like I'm saying. It's just so great for your health. Count your blessings every night to make a budget and stick to it. If you haven't seen my YouTube video called How to Become Financially Free, I highly recommend that one. It's probably one of my favorite videos I've ever made. It's such important information and you can use all different kinds of tools to empower yourself and your finances and create a more peaceful life. Andrew and I make it a priority to keep on top of our finances by tracking our spending, figuring out where we can spend less, and focusing on building our savings. And you too can meaningfully improve your financial health and achieve your financial goals by looking at your finances holistically to see where you can improve. And you Using a financial budgeting tool is a great place to start. I highly recommend Truebill for this, which is an all-in-one personal finance app which helps you save more and spend less. It groups all your accounts together so that you can track your earnings and your spending in one place and create personalized budgets. It also can track your subscriptions, cancel unwanted ones for you, negotiate bills on your behalf, monitor your credit score, and automate your savings. I personally find this app user-friendly and very helpful. One of my favorite features of the app is the budget feature, which 
budgets that automatically monitor your spending per category. You can get friendly notifications when you've exceeded them and visualize your spend to earn ratio by month, quarter, or year. I also love the set up a smart savings account feature where you choose the amount and frequency and Truebill will automatically deposit that amount into a smart savings account on the app. So download Truebill for free by going to truebill.com slash Ellen Fisher or clicking the link in my description below. The next one is to start a garden or herb bed. I know I've said this many times, but honestly, we really need to be going more towards the direction of growing back to our roots and just growing more of our own food and not being so reliant on quick foods and convenience foods from grocery stores where we don't know the health of the soil and we don't know a lot of the ingredients that are even listed. So even if you have limited space, consider growing just a little bit of herbs or fresh vegetables in a pot on your porch or even sprouts in your window. Some easy plants to grow in a pot would be dill or cilantro, basil, mint, oregano. Growing your own food, even if it's just a little bit to start, does make a difference and it's wonderful to be to know the health of the soil that you're getting your food from. So just start somewhere. It's there's, there's so many benefits, not only just for our own health, but for the environment and the planet as well. The next one is to limit your screen time, especially in the evenings. An hour before bed, put your phone away and your computer and allow your body to naturally wind down and decompress. Blue light from TVs, computers, and phones block our natural ability to create melatonin, an essential sleep hormone, which makes it more difficult to get restful sleep. Not to mention that if you're watching something like really intense or can create emotions in you, that also can make it harder to wind down. So do something like hang out with a loved one and just converse face to face or or rest together in bed or listen to a podcast and something that's gonna just help you relax and wind down. Also, another screen habit I love is being really mindful about using my phone around others, um, especially my children. As my children approach to put my phone down immediately and look my children in the eye. The more that your children, as they walk up to you, see you just staring at a screen and not giving them attention, the more that you're telling them that the phone is more important to you than they are. And that includes even just being around other people People. There's so many times now in society where people are just staring at their phones and not engaging with each other And I just find it really helpful for our mental health and our overall wellness to just engage and just put the phone down <laughs> This habit does so much good to not only cultivate active listening But also to create deeper connections with everyone around you. The next one is to add knowledge to your life consistently whether that's through reading or listening to podcasts when you're in car rides by yourself or even listening before bed, which is another great way that you can put the screen down but still be engaged in learning. You can check out my own podcast, The Ellen Fisher Podcast, which I already have lots of incredible episodes on a wide variety of topics. When my head is full of questions And the sky is full of rain When I'm worrying about what I can't change Take a look at my reflection And try to make a funny face And for a second all my sorrows melt away Cause if we just smile We can forget all of our troubles for a while We can just live inside this moment You and I get through the darkness Knowing we'll find the light and if you're looking for some new awesome books you can either read or listen to, I love The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, which is great for relationships and deepening. I also love The Conscious Parent and The Awakened Family by Shafali Saberi, who I just interviewed for the podcast, and that one is up now. The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey is incredible. And as far as nutrition books, I love Whole Rethinking the Science of Nutrition by nutritional biochemist T. Colin Campbell, as well as The Proof is in the Plan by Simon Hill and Viber Fueled by Will Bolsowitz, which I told you before. Opening our mind to new concepts and ideas, which you're bound to come across the more that you're adding knowledge to your life, helps us to deepen our relationships and understand what people think the way that they do and to be more engaged. The next one is to create a 20 minute morning routine.
20 minutes of intentional personal time can set the tone and change the entire energy of the rest of your day. Whether you like to meditate, journal, stretch, or go for a walk, creating that intentional energy for yourself really sets a tone and makes it easier for you to conquer your day. And for parents, that might be a little bit difficult when you have the high demands of what your children need in the morning. So I find it really helpful to not expect to be able to do it right away in the morning, but know that I'm going to get to it at some point in the morning. So once I get the kids all set up, they got their breakfast all set up, everyone's taking care of, my husband's there to help, I go lock the door in my room or my bathroom and go take care of myself. Be at like a long, luxurious shower, which I've talked about a couple times before on my YouTube channel, where like once or twice a week I do like a face mask and I do some body scrubs and facial, what are those called? Facial cleansers. And I really take care of myself that way. I just have a slower morning where I'm not being bombarded with all these requests and needs and I can just focus on myself. And now I know that like a shower is just a basic need that we all need, but I really try to make it more intentional and it's like time for myself. And that is really helpful for me that when I get that, I can conquer my day. And for you, your priority might be different depending on what you need the most. Like for you, you'd rather just get in a quick shower and do something else for yourself, like get to exercise by yourself or go to the gym. Um, so figure out ways that you can take care of yourself throughout the week and a morning routine is just really helpful. This next tip I think is really important, especially for parents to hear and be reminded of, is to treat yourself. Take care of yourself at least once a week or once a month, even once a month. If you can only get once a month, find ways to either go on a date with your partner, or go out with your girlfriends and leave the kids with a babysitter. And if you're looking for something especially cost effective to be able to go out on a date or go hang out with your girlfriends without having to pay a lot for a babysitter, something my parents did growing up, which I thought was super cool, is that with their best friends, every week they would rotate dropping off the kids at one couple's house while the other got to go on a date. And then the next week, all the kids went to the other house house while the other couple went on a date. So it was a way to trade off without without having to pay for a babysitter and we've done that many times before. Though as I'm saying this, this is reminding me and being a good reminder for myself because Andrew and I have not been on a date in like six months, which is just not cool. We need to start going on more dates. So I'm going to take my own advice for this one. <laughs> but I definitely get some girl time. I'll leave the kids with Andrew while I'll go hang out with my best friends for the evening. Doing that once a month is just really helpful and replenishing for myself. So just don't forget to take care of yourself and treat yourself. <laughs> Should it really be considered treating yourself or just taking care of yourself? I'm not really sure what the best terminology is, but I do think that getting time like that for yourself is really helpful for you to just conquer the rest of your month, the rest of your week um, on the to-do list and all the things that you need to get done. If you're constantly doing all that stuff and not taking care of yourself in a just intentional, relaxed way, it, you can burn out. It can very easily become like burnout session. So don't forget to just go do something for yourself every once in a while. Okay, this next one is also one for parents. Say yes to your kids more. Get through the darkness knowing we'll find the light. If you just I promise it will make things better, not worse. I know it's really easy to get caught up in all the rules and it's very easy to want to say no to things, but think about being in your child's shoes and the things that they want to do, they are constantly being told, no, 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 you can't do this, you can't touch that, don't climb on that. And every once in a while, it's nice to just remind yourself that like, hey, the more I say yes, the more my children thrive. And that is the absolute truth. Obviously, there's boundaries like, no, you cannot jump off the roof of our house, that type of thing. But there's a lot of things that we can say yes to that we don't. Just just because it's an inconvenience for us or we just don't feel like saying yes and try to humble yourself a bit say yes to your kids more it will create more authentic connection it empowers them because they are more in control of their life and your family will thrive so much more because connection is more important than correction so the more authentic connection you have with your child caring about their feelings and their desires and responding in that way the better your relationship will thrive the next one is to create systems And what I 
mean by this is that it's really easy to create goals, but if you don't have systems in place that make it easier for you to get to those goals, you're never going to reach those goals. It's the little steps and actions every day that bring the goals to the reality. So instead of being goal oriented, be system oriented. So for me, one of my important systems I have is that I get the smaller things done before the big ones as much as possible because the more things I can check off my list, the more feasible it feels, the more possible it feels to get it done. And that's just what works for my brain. But it may be easier for your brain to get the big things done first. I plan on reading the book Atomic Habits by James Clear at the start of the year, which is really helpful for this particular topic. I also have a bonus tip. It's have personal responsibility. Get out of the victim mindset, get out of the blame game and saying that I could never be like this person, I could never get to where they are, or it's their fault that I'm not here. No, stop it. You need to focus on what you can change inside and that you are powerful enough to get what you want in life if you go after it and are driven. So take responsibility, get out of the rut where your mindset is negative, get to that positive mindset, do all the things and learn the tools to help get you out of any kind of rut that you are within your mind and realize that you are a victor and that you can do it. I hope you found this video helpful. I will see you next video.